morning pot coins. Today is Sunday, 16 August 2015. We are currently on block 964359 of the pot chain. Here's what's been going on since last time. Pot coin is in its final halving. The current block reward is down to three pot per block and only 10 more days until the first staked block, which means I should be staking before the next show. Exchanges are still having problems with Potcoin. I poked around Cripsy and found that they're claiming network issues. You can still trade Potcoins. I got 50 just to try it out and it does work, but you can't deposit or withdraw them. And they are about 40,000 blocks behind the current pot chain. The fork was at block 920,000, and they got a few thousand blocks after that. My guess is that they were on the wrong chain, and miners on that wrong chain were auto-selling. Then when people tried to pull out those coins, they weren't there on the main chain. So they just shut it down. Again, that's just my guess, because I don't actually know what happened. Maybe it could be as simple as having a bad node list. I have no idea who has to do what to fix the issue. But I hope that they do that thing soon. Bitrex and Polynex are having issues too. I haven't checked them out, but supposedly the trading has been halted along with deposits and withdrawals. All the wallet and the exchange issues have really been dragging down Potcoin for the last two months. These are the biggest problems Potcoin is currently facing. You can't get anyone to adopt something that doesn't work. The sooner this gets resolved, the sooner we can get back to spreading the word about Potcoin. But in the meantime, I don't think it's a good idea to introduce new people to Potcoin while it's still having this many issues. Two months ago, there was a story about stupid asshole cops in Santa Ana, California, that raided a dispensary and destroyed private property, stole product, ate edibles, and abused employees. Here's a clip. Now, three of these corrupt, worthless pigs are trying to sue their own department for letting the video be released and showing the whole internet their misconduct. They're claiming their right to privacy was violated since they thought they destroyed all of the other cameras and they didn't think they were being recorded. 
and the dispensary didn't have their permission to film their criminal activity. Leafly, the site I saw the story on, used the analogy of it being like punching a stranger in the face than being mad at them for getting blood on your fist without your permission. It's my opinion that these armed, violent, and dangerous psychopaths should be locked up and removed from society permanently. Anyone with that twisted a view of the law should not be enforcing it. So what's going to happen now? My prediction is that they will not only get away with it, but probably be rewarded. Maybe even set a legal precedent in California that makes anyone filming the police breaking the law the actual criminal. Or maybe it'll just get swept under the rug, no one will ever mention it again, and the cops will probably get an early retirement deal, collect a pension for the rest of their lives at the expense of the taxed citizens that they have been fucking over. My disillusionment of the criminal injustice system prevents me from believing that these pigs will be held accountable. Hopefully they can prove me wrong, but I'm definitely not counting on it. Over the last two weeks, many Bitcoin companies have abandoned New York. With the Bit license in full effect now, only the largest and richest companies can afford to comply. For most, the cost of compliance is not worth the income that it may generate. There is a $5,000 non-refundable fee just to apply, but that's not the real cost of getting a license. Bitstamp claims the cost was close to $100,000 when factoring in legal fees and man hours. Monetago, a much smaller Bitcoin startup, got away with less than $50,000 for the license. They already had hundreds of pages and thousands of hours put into their global compliance program, so much of the work was already done. They also lucked out by being able to generate most of the paperwork in-house. If that had not been the case, they think it would have cost about a quarter million. Coinbase also has a bit license, but they didn't want to say how much it cost them. My guess is that it was too painful of a number to say out loud. Bittrex got theirs extremely cheap, under 20000 and only wasted 80 hours generating the paperwork. Bill Shahara, founder of Bittrex, said, I'm sure larger companies incurred much higher costs than we did. We were lucky that we had a lot of the paperwork already available. So a few companies were able to stay in New York. As for the rest, they just closed up shop to New Yorkers. Some of them are even actively blocking IP addresses from the state of New York. This list includes Bitfinex, Kraken, Local Bitcoins, Bitquick, GoCoin, Polonex, Zappo, Shapeshift, Paxful, BTC Guild, EOBot, Genesis Mining, and a few others. Some gave their customers a few days to get their Bitcoins out. Bitfinex sold their customers Bitcoin at market value yesterday, and they're waiting for the New Yorkers to pull out their dollars since they don't have Bitcoin anymore. While most of the attention for the past year has been about the Know Your Customer requirements in the Bit license, many of the companies that left stated the restriction on innovation as the main reason for blocking New York. Since having the license requires you to get new licenses for any new product or services offered, or just to change any existing product or service in any way. To put it another way, they have to pay the state to manage their company in a way that they don't see fit. Ultimately, I think this is a good thing. Bring jobs and innovation to places that want it. If New York doesn't want it, they can be left holding the bag of dollars once the dollar collapses. Hopefully, they'll serve as a warning to other fascist states and become the example of what not to do. In contrast, the places that accept these companies should enjoy economic growth and be better prepared for the inevitable economic collapse that is sure to come. That's it for this edition of Mad Potcoins. Smoke them if you got them. <laughs>